What in your life do you consider holy? Holy. The Hebrew word is kadosh, the root of which means set aside, consecrated for a specialized purpose. What in your life do you consider holy? Is it an object of great value? Something that you have set aside, perhaps in a frame, or kept in a vault? Or maybe it's something that is only used on special occasions, holidays. Maybe it's a location, a structure, a place that you only go for certain sorts of activities. It's interesting because the first time that the word holy is used in scripture, the very first time, it's not used to talk about a thing at all. It's used to talk about time. The word holy is first used in Genesis 2-3. God creates the world in six days and rests on the seventh. God sets aside this time and makes it kadosh. This is the origin of the practice of Sabbath. A holy time that's not just for God, but also for us. And that should immediately call our attention, right? That this is something that we share with God. That we get to do with God that God invites us to. Of course, it's not only an invitation. (laughs) It's also a mandate. The practice of Sabbath, it's mandated in the fourth commandment. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Now, the word command or mandate, it doesn't feel particularly life-giving at face value, at least probably not for most of us. We don't like being told what to do. A mandate, it feels confining, restricting, but the Ten Commandments are actually rooted in a context of freedom. The commandments are initially given to the Israelites in the book of Exodus after they're liberated from slavery in Egypt. So yes, the commandments are commandments, but they're guidelines for how to live as free people. These commandments are then reviewed in the book of Deuteronomy, where, as read from this morning, as the Israelites prepare to enter the promised land and begin this new chapter in their communal lives, they review how to live in liberation. Therefore, one of the core pieces of liberated living is Sabbath, holy time, time that is set aside for being, resting, hanging out, delighting in creation, 
After all, that's what God did. God made the heavens and earth and all nature of creepy crawly things and animals and humans, and then God took a day to just enjoy it. It's a time that's meant for everyone in society, regardless of status or wealth. It's even meant for the non-human beings. Did you hear that in verse 14? Your ox, your donkey, all your livestock, all the animals in the land itself are called to participate in Sabbath. Sabbath is a time to be free. Which begs the question, I think, if Sabbath is a time to be free, then why are the Pharisees so angry with Jesus? Today's gospel text is the final in a series of escalating conflicts that occur at the beginning of Mark as Jesus starts his ministry. These are conflicts in which Jesus challenges what one commentator calls the essential categories of life. The categories that provide structure to self and society. Jesus challenges people's understanding of categories like power and money and authority. And in today's scripture, he challenges the categories of sacred or holy. The Sabbath was essential to the Pharisees. It was an essential category. It was part of how they and the Jewish community as a whole organized their lives. And Jesus challenges this group of Pharisees by raising questions about what sort of action, what sort of work is permissible on that day. Now this was a live question at the time and has been debated by many Jewish rabbis and scholars, what is and isn't allowed. And Jesus is, is wiggling into this gray space and challenging this group of leaders' understanding of that. And this challenge is so destabilizing to them, so infuriating, that they're ready to kill him by the end of it. I want to suggest this morning that we put ourselves in the place of the Pharisees. What does Jesus challenge in us? I think for us, the challenge is the inverse of that facing the Pharisees. In our society, it's perhaps not about what kind of work we should engage on the Sabbath, but what kind of work we should cease. Rabbi and activist Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote a beautiful set of reflections on Sabbath in which he distinguishes between space and time. Heschel says that we spend most of our contemporary lives focused on space, on things. We spend most of our lives focused on things we can buy, or on the labor that gives us money to buy those things. Now, Heschel says that these things, space, it's not necessarily bad. We need things to survive. And it's also okay to have things that we enjoy. I have things I enjoy, I'm sure we all do. But Heschel says that we get out of balance 
by over-focusing on space and under-focusing on time. Here's how he puts it. To gain control of the world of space is certainly one of our tasks. The danger begins when in gaining power in the realm of space, we forfeit all aspirations in the realm of time. There is a realm of time where the goal is not to have, but to be. Not to own, but to give. Not to control, but to share. Not to subdue, but to be in accord. Life goes wrong when the control of space, the acquisition of things of space, becomes our sole concern. We live in a culture that is deeply concerned with the control of space. Quite literally, in some cases, the control of space and the acquisition of things of space. Our value as people is so often measured by how much money we make or the title we hold or how many hours we work or the things that we own. Heschel says that Sabbath is a way to attune to holiness in time, to get ourselves back in balance. And it's something we, we need to do every week because we get out of balance quite quickly during those other days. Sabbath practice reminds us how to live as liberated people. <sighs> but too often we don't want to live that way. Not really. An imaginative reinterpretation of today's gospel text might find Jesus refusing to answer his emails for weeks, instead sitting in Jackson Park watching the birds of spring. Or it might find Jesus looking through our financial statements and asking why we've invested our money in weapons manufacturing or in companies that profit by destroying the earth and asking us, is this really worth it? Or it might find Jesus selling one of these beautiful stained glass windows to pay off as many people's medical debt as possible. Were any of those uncomfortable to hear? Yeah, good, good. It was uncomfortable for me to say. Now please hear me. I'm not suggesting that we all need to toss our laptops into the lake or that any of these windows that have been so lovingly restored should be sold to the highest bidder. That's not my suggestion. But I am suggesting that the Jesus of this passage, it's not a comfortable Jesus. This is a Jesus that makes us squirm in our seats because he challenges the things that we consider holy. Can I be honest with you all? Sure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that wasn't a rhetorical question, so yes, thank you. Um, this commandment is probably the hardest for me to keep. And if I can be more honest, I don't think I currently keep it at all. Noah can attest that I struggled all weekend to write this sermon. I didn't do it Friday, and I didn't really do it yesterday morning, and I really only did it yesterday night because I no longer had a choice. 
I struggle to write it because this one gets me. It challenges me to my core. I, as a person, find it very difficult to separate my value from my work. I find it very hard to put work aside at the end of the day. I find it very hard to resist buying more things. I like things. I just got a really beautiful pair of shoes in the mail. They're awesome. I like things. And they might make me happy for a moment. They're not these shoes. Maybe I'll wear them another Sunday. I like them, but they do nothing for my soul. And so the sermon was hard for me to write because I find it hard to keep Sabbath. Christian theologian Walter Brueggemann talks about Sabbath as resistance. To keep Sabbath holy is to resist valuing space over time. To keep Sabbath holy is to resist an economy that values profit over life. And that's the economy we live in. To keep Sabbath holy is sometimes to, I'm talking to me here, resist our own impulses. Because it's not what God is calling us to. And Brueggemann also says that Sabbath is an alternative. To keep Sabbath holy is to embrace an alternative to sheer exhaustion. How many of us are exhausted? The sheer exhaustion that we feel from gig workers to shift workers and retail workers to CEOs and surgeons to teachers and homemakers and even pastors. The truth is, we were not created by the God of the universe to be chronically exhausted. And we were not redeemed by Jesus Christ in order to be burnt out again and again and again. The text says that the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. Keeping Sabbath, whatever that might look like for each of us, reminds us how to live free. Reminds us that time itself is holy and that the rhythms of creation include the blessing of rest and restoration. Jesus knew that he had infuriated the Pharisees. <laughs> he knew that he had challenged them. And the text says he was grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus knew then, and he knows now, that sometimes we struggle to live free and that we get it wrong. And so he created communion, a time for us to come to the table and be reminded that we're forgiven, to give us permission to try it again, to call us in to this community of discipleship, and to ask us to remember him. <laughs>